Hi guys. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see and hear me okay. Um, I know the situation isn't great, the lighting isn't great. It's, it's the apartment I live in, what can I say? Um, anyway, um, so recent events, and the recent event is the um, Rebel Media, um, David Menzies incident where he was physically removed from or kicked out of a um, an event center where um, Andrew Shear was doing a speech. Now, there are people saying that he was arrested. Apparently, he wasn't actually arrested. He was held for a bit and then released. Um, they're also saying that he, and I'm not saying Rebel Media is saying this, it's just like the 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 rumors that are flying around about this whole incident. And trust me, I am not defending Andrew Shear's actions because I think they're absolutely deplorable and I'll get to that. But um, there, the story is a little different than what Rebel presented it and it's a little different than what the CPC campaign are trying to present it as. Um, look somewhere in the middle and you'll find the truth. And that's basically what I'm looking at. Um, I think there was, you know, David Menzies was not actually arrested. He was held and released. Um, and it was because he stood in front of the tour bus with Andrew Shear in it. Um, and they saw, the, I mean, the CPC are saying that the, he was held for his own safety. I think it was actually more, they were getting him out of the way so that they could continue on with what they had planned to do. Um, whenever there was kickback about it, what happened was David Menzies was invited to an event later in the day, the same security guy that had him removed before asked him to leave again, changed his mind, um, and told him he wasn't allowed to ask any questions. These things bother me because as a writer, freedom of speech is imperative as far as I'm concerned. And the censorship that's happening globally and, and particularly in Western societies is absolutely reprehensible as far as I'm concerned. And that's why I mean, I know I haven't been around lately. I'm actually, <laughs> um, I just finished my life coach certification and uh, I'm starting a program teaching people how to become professional writers. So I'm seriously busy building that out, um, which is a lot of work and a lot of time and, and a lot of attention. And so I haven't had a lot of time to come on and, and do a lot of talking or, or blogging. Um, however, I did spend most of this week when I should have been focusing on that, focusing on stuff to do with the election because um, I'm actually, I'm not staying in my riding right now. I'm actually in Edmonton. Um, my riding is Sturgeon uh, Parkland and I'm going out there on the 12th. So I'm going to vote on the 12th. That's my plan anyway. So I wanted to get to the bottom of this because this for me is the issue that will either make or break a party. Um, and so here's what I found out. I, I, first of all, I called and left a message on Andrew Shear's um, office machine and didn't hear back. I, I think I forgot to let, leave my name and phone number so because I was so incensed at the time. Um, and then I cooled down a bit and um, I called my... Um, He's, he's my MP, conservative, so my representative, my, my CPC re representative for Sturgeon Parkland, um, Dane Lloyd, I called him, seems like a nice guy, um, explained what he could, um, but he didn't seem to know all of the details either. Um, and then I called, uh, let's see here, CPC HQ, and they kind of did some lip service -y kind of a thing and said that the reason that um, Andrew Shear and the, the CPC are kind of distancing themselves from Rebel Media is because Rebel has become somewhat of an activist news organization and they don't want to be involved with activist organizations uh, because, you know, optics would be bad on that. And I did bring up the point that the mainstream media have come out and behaved somewhat like an activist organization as well, whenever you consider that Unifor, um, I think his name is Jerry Diaz, has come out and said that they are going to do everything in their power to stop the conservatives from winning the election. So, any, I mean, they said that months ago. So what's the difference between 
anybody that works for Unifor, any news organization that's that's involved with Unifor at all, being a an activist, non-activist, like it, it doesn't make sense to me. Aren't they all on par? And then whenever you start listening to some of the stories, because that was my next phone call, I called my guy, um, Tyler Beauchamp, I think is his name. <laughs> and I talked to him, he's my PPC guy. I talked to him for around about two hours. Um, and we he told me a lot of stuff that's been going on. There are a lot of people who are being um, victimized just for being associated with the PPC. There are people, including himself, that have been put under pressure by, let's just say, various entities to drop out, or um, there have been people who have had their jobs threatened. There are people who have been threatened with violence from groups like Antifa. There, I mean, this is Canada, and that really, it shocks me. And I mean, I, I believe what he's saying because I've heard rumors about this. And I've heard people talk about um, Maxime Bernier and the, the People's Party as if they are racist, which just as a thinking person having actually looked at things, I don't see the correlation between racism and saying, look, we need to get immigration under control because we have to make sure that pe these people have housing, jobs. I mean, the infrastructure just needs to be there. And and something on that, that that I would really like to speak to is whenever you have people coming to a new country, whether it's for a long-term visit or whether it is to live there, you have language barriers. You have just the, some of the most simple things like going to get groceries. If you can't ask for what you want, because there's a language barrier. You can't find the things that you're used to cooking. And now all of a sudden, you know, you've got really nobody to interpret for you. You're having to figure out just that simple thing of figuring out how to feed yourself, how to cook for yourself. And then there's all of the other stuff on top of that, socialization um, with new people who don't understand you. Um, weather differences because Canada is very different than a lot of other countries. Um, it, it's just there's a whole plethora of things that are different here. Like what are you going to wear in 40 below weather whenever you're used to 40 above? I mean it's things that are that simple. It takes a while for that to um, become, for you to learn these things and then just to become part of that society and just those very simple basic things, let alone the customs and culture that you're going into is different as well. So to get immigration under control is what they're talking about, what the PPC is talking about, isn't about racism. It wouldn't matter if you were coming from Australia or um, Spain or any country. If you are coming to a new country, you don't understand the language, you don't understand what's available to you in so many different ways. You're trying to learn the language so that you can get work. I mean, there's all of these different things that you have to consider. And that is why getting immigration under control so that we can make sure that the people that come in have got what they need so that they can live successful lives in our society. To just throw people around like you can just plug and play, that is absolutely absurd. And we're seeing the issues with that. Um, just over the last few years, whenever there's been so many people coming in to various countries, including Europe, it's not working. And there's a lot of, of um, let's just call it angstiness because of it, will be really nice and very polite about it so that nobody gets into any trouble for, you know, talking about the realities of these, issues, these situations. Um, but I think everybody knows that the reality is pretty scary. Um, and it's it's concerning not just for the uh, let's just call them native population and y'all know what I mean by native population the people who historically have lived there um, but it's it's a dangerous situation and a difficult situation for those coming in from other other countries as well please excuse the meowing that is my son's cat anyway um, so uh, what is happening in Canada? 
with the PPC being shut down, deplatformed. I heard about Mark per, um, Perolivus. I think I finally said his name right. <laughs> um, all of these things where, where they're lying, they're coming up with these stories that are absolute garbage. They're apparently there are people that are approaching some of the CPP or pardon me, the PPC people and basically kind of whispering to them and saying, look, I'm going to vote for you, but I don't want anybody to know. Um, and it's because of all of this extra baggage that comes along with it, not just the racism, but the threats of violence, the pressure from coworkers and employers, the just all of it. It's absolute garbage. When did we move and shift into this Stasi-esque communistic kind of society where you have to be afraid of who you support politically or the words that you use. And I mean, that for me is the big thing. There is a war on words. There is a war on how you can express yourself in this country and others as well. And it's appalling. And until politicians start standing up and talking about that, and I mean, Andrew Scheer talks about being pro-free speech, and yet he behaves like this, and he has not come out and said anything about how this situation was wrong, and how, you know, freedom of the press is important and the rebel media can have full access. No, on, on the contrary. Apparently, immediately after this happened, he made a kind of a quiet um, pronouncement about how um, he still disavows the rebel media. So, and, and I mean, I, I said to them and I say to you, I don't care if it's Rebel Media, I don't care if it's Antifa Weekly, I don't care if it's, um, you know, Jimmy Boy who lives in his parents' basement and has five subscribers on his blog, but he's covering the election. If you're not willing to speak to people, then you have no, if you have no, hmm, I'm getting upset again. If you're not going to speak to your electorate, whether they are, like I said, Jimmy Bob in the basement, or Antifa Weekly, or The Rebel, or the, I, I can't even think, CBC, any of them, any of them at all, no matter how you feel about them, you still, as citizens, you have an obligation as someone who wants to be an elected official, or as someone who is an elected official, official, you are obligated to speak to them in a democratic society. And if you will not speak to them, that means that you are against democracy as far as I'm concerned, and you are against freedom of speech and freedom of the press, which goes hand in glove with freedom of expression. So that is my issue with the whole David Menzies thing. Um, and, and it's why I now am in a situation where I really can't, in good conscience, vote for the CPC. I just can't. Because as far as I'm concerned, the proof is in the pudding. If you are saying one thing, but doing something completely different, if you are saying that you believe in freedom of speech, but then are talking about how important um, censorship of hate speech is, whenever there's no definition of hate speech. <sighs> Compelled speech, hate speech, all of it. It is strictly, simply, without all the fancy stuff, it's just censorship by any other name. And I'm sick to death of it, particularly with our elected officials in what is supposed to be a democracy, behaving differently than what's, what the words are that are coming out of their mouths. So. Um, I'm getting too upset to continue because um, I'm not going to make any more sense, really. I'm just going to wind up ranting. So um, I will leave it with you there. But I think it's important for you to know to not just listen to the words, but watch the actions. And secondly, um, you know, whenever we have the PPC that are being so marginalized and so victimized, by the media and by other politicians. Because there was another thing I, I heard about. Apparently, um, the local politicians are not allowed to um, debate. They're ha they are only allowed to do forums. And what some of them are doing is they'll hold a forum or, or they'll you know um, schedule a forum 
and at the last minute they will cancel it and then the CPC will do an event and meet and greet in the same exact venue at the same exact time as the forum was supposed to be held. So you've got people who are going to go to the debate who are now going to an event they had no idea or, you know, they find out whenever they get there or they find out just before that um, they've basically been hoodwinked. They're not being respected enough to be allowed to hear other voices and other opinions. I mean, we let the communist parties sit in on these deba debates. We let all kinds of different parties, the rhinos, which has always been a joke party since, I mean, I voted for them whenever I was, I think, 18. Um, kind of his revenge against my, my dad's very conservativeness. Um, and he was mad at me for a long time because of that. Um, but, you know, you, you, they let these guys debate. They let these guys talk. They, they'll cover them as well. Why are they not allowing the PPC voices to be heard? Because it's not just saying that you have no respect for the PPC and you don't want to give them a platform. You're also, when you do that, insulting every single individual who you don't trust to make up their own minds given the facts. There's no old saying, give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Well, if you really believe that the PPC and others have got nothing of value to say or that they are so reprehensible that people will be turned off by them or whatever, then give them the rope. Let them hang themselves if that's what you think is going to happen. But the way it's standing right now, I think that you are scared and I am calling out all media and all of the other politicians, including Dane Lloyd, including Andrew Scheer. What are you so afraid of? I mean, Trudeau's got plenty to be afraid of. He has his own reputation and garbage. And, and Jagmeet Singh is another one who, absolutely like talk about the hypocrisy he talks about giving people a voice but he wants to deplatform the ppc because the ppc has no right to talk about whatever you cannot square that circle you just can't it doesn't make sense it doesn't connect what you're saying two things out both sides of your face and they are completely opposite of what you're you're supposed to be about <sighs> Mm. It's all very ugly, and I, I can't fathom how it is happening in a place like Canada, where we have always been so open and accepting, and where we pride ourselves on our intelligence and our ability to think things through and make the reasonable decision. But our politicians have so little respect for us now that they don't want us to hear an alternative side of things. It's not good. It really is not good because it has echoes from the past and not a pretty version of that past. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I, I have more to say about a lot of different issues, so I will probably be on here a lot in the next while. Um, just voicing those things when I'm hopefully a little bit calmer. Um, I think the next one that I'm going to do is going to be about... Um, the child abuse that's going on in our world that is being applauded, really. So stay tuned for one about the drag kids and Greta Thunberg um, and that whole environmental situation. And, and, well, not so much the environmental situation, just the using of children for these people's agenda, because as far as I'm concerned, it's abuse. So stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, I don't care who you vote for. I do, but I don't. <laughs> what I care about is that you get out there and vote. Make your voice heard. Do the right thing. Place your vote. Have a good one, guys.